Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome back once again to a TransWest Truck Trailer RV. My name's Mark Love, and uh, today I want to talk to you about a, a really special and unique Class B motorhome. It's called the Winnebago Bolt. Uh, the unit we're showing today actually is stock number 5N191179. Now the Winnebago Bolt is built on the Mercedes-Benz Sprinter chassis. Uh, it's become probably the most popular chassis for the Class B motorhomes, and I think one of the most comfortable ones I've ever driven. This is powered by their V6 3 liter uh, diesel engine, 188 horsepower. Uh, the nice thing about this engine, it gets great fuel economy. So, you know, probably going to do much better than any of the gas units you might be considering. Uh, this, this unit actually has a four-wheel drive option. We're on a two-wheel drive here, but I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the different RV lifestyles and why somebody might choose this unit over another. Now, uh, face it, if you're going to get an RV, you're buying into a lifestyle. Uh, if you're retired, maybe you want a 45-foot diesel pusher, something you can have all the comforts of home, uh, travel full-time, or go down to somewhere out of the cold weather for the winter. Maybe you're a young family with a couple, three kids, and they each want to bring a friend. When you tow your uh, boat out to the lake for the weekend, you need something that will sleep six or eight people. That would be great on a Class C. But this model, it's really designed for two people. Although there are seat belts for six in here, it's ideal for one or two people, and uh, especially the ones that maybe want to get off the beaten road, uh, beaten path a little bit, take the uh, less traveled roads. And let's walk around and let me uh, show you a few of the features that I like. Uh, number one, it is an electric door. I do like that feature. Very smooth opening. And you have these roll-off screens. And of course, you know, when you're traveling, you probably have these zipped up and rolled up to the top. But the nice thing about it is there's a magnetic side to it. So you can get in and out real easily. Uh, a lot of times you might want to sit here at night and have the doors open, but keep the bugs out. So I love these screens. They have one in the back here also that I'll show you. Uh, you may even want to just turn on your, your roof fan and draw air through at night. And if you're not worried about critters getting in, you can leave your doors open. But uh, here's another one. You can see great storage here. Uh, I have two hobbies that I am absolutely passionate about. One of them is skiing. The other one's photography. So you can see you have a lot of room for gear down here. This makes into a bed that I will show you later. Uh, I would probably leave it as a bed and, and stow a lot of gear down here, but we'll go through that a little later. This unit actually zips down. And this part here, uh, you've got a cover for night right here that you can zip up from the inside. So you do have a full blackout shade, but once again, You've got this magnetic attachment here. So if you want to get in and out without unzipping it, it's real easy to do that. And they're heavy duty, uh, you know, very thick material on these frames, very nice uh, netting, uh, probably one of the best I've seen. Another nice feature that you have on this one, right back here, we've got an outside shower, they call it. It's more like a, a uh, kitchen sprayer, but you do have a nice, you know, long, about a six or eight foot hose here. So maybe you get back from a hike and you're muddy and you want to hose your boots off before you take them off and get inside. Great place to do it right here. Uh, does have a switch for your water pump. And then you also have an LED light there in the back. Winnebago really did a, a great job when they were, you know, uh, thinking how they were going to build this, what, uh, what systems they're going to put in it. And, you know, for the, for the people that aren't going to, you know, uh, a KOA or the main campgrounds, maybe you want to go to a national park, you'll get this in here. If you're a, a fly fisherman or a photographer like myself and you want to, 
you know, get up on some ridge and overlook the Colorado River so you're there for a sunrise shot in the morning or maybe be at the top of a mountain pass at the end of some old mining road with a ghost town nearby that you're going to photograph at sunset, you won't get there with a 30 or 40 foot class A. Even a class C, it's probably 8 feet wide, 11, 12 feet tall, low clearance, bad maneuverability. These sprinter chassis are the ideal unit. They're a little bit narrow, even though they do have some height to it, which is nice when you're inside, they've got the clearance. This one's only a two-wheel drive and still has a lot of clearance to it. Let's walk around over on this side. and uh, When we get inside, I, I'm going to point out uh, a unique uh, electrical system on this. It's called the Volta system, and I'll talk about that a little bit more. But over here, you can see you've got your dump for your gray water here. Over on this side, your black tank, and you do have a separate gray tank just for your kitchen sink. And uh, there's not a lot of outside storage on any of these units. But, you know, with the four-wheel drive, of course, you're going to be up about four more inches. And I want to have Cherish uh, take a shot of the roof and show you a few things there. Uh, number one, part of this uh, electrical system, Winnebago has put two 115-watt solar panels on there. And uh, this actually is an optional roof rack, and this rack allows you to put a third solar panel. There's actually a, an empty port right there that you can plug right into. You can also see you have a power vent fan right there in front of you. Uh, kind of a fantastic fan with the Max Air cover. So if you want to leave that on, maybe you have pets uh, you're going to leave inside when you go out for a hike. Uh, you, can, you can run that fan all day long. Actually, with the Volta system, you could run your generator, or run your, excuse me, your uh, air conditioner all day long off the battery power and inverter. Let you hand that back to me, and this uh, ladder actually is a removable one. This isn't where it would be stored. Typically, when you're driving, you're going to have that back here. Now, some people put uh, maybe an extra rack here, or a heavy-duty bumper, and and some outside storage boxes. At that point, if you're going to do it, we can permanently mount this ladder over on the side. But this is uh, where it's going to travel. Let me get this out. And you can actually get these little lock nuts here with a lock inside so somebody can't come along and pull it off while you're not around. Okay, also, uh, it's got a 5,000 pound tow hitch. You're set up with your seven-way plug and, and uh, back here you have a quick connect for propane. Uh, you might want to use an outside gas grill, something like that. Cherish, I don't know if you can get down there, but I'd like to get a shot underneath of the holding tanks to show you that there are heat pads up under here. Now, this is uh, your black tank, and you've got an electric heat pad here. You also have uh, heat pads on your gray tank, and the, uh, the freshwater tank is, well, it's up there a little farther, harder to see. But the freshwater tank has extra insulation and also an electric heat pad. So, like I was saying, this is a great year-round coach. If you're going to go out in the winter, uh, you don't have to worry about freeze-ups and things like that because you've got the extra heat pad. They put extra insulation in this. With that Volta system, you're not going to be worried about running out of uh, uh, battery power. So, uh, let's actually move around to the inside and I want to talk about that a little bit. Another thing, this awning great awning and they're wind censored. So if you go somewhere and leave it out and that wind starts bouncing your awning, it's going to shut on its own. And before you come in, let me uh, 
turn on a couple of the lights that we've got. Uh, so we've got, oops, we've got the awning lights right here. You can see up underneath, but we, and it's hard to see, but we actually have some ground effect lights under this bumper. So maybe you're going to, you know, in my case, uh, go out at sunset to take some pictures and, and I'm coming back and it's dark already. You've got really cool looking ground effect lights. You got your awning light. You can see it from way off. It's just a welcoming sight when you're coming back. So why don't you step up in here and move to the front and I'll get that out of your way. We don't need all the lights on now. I want to talk about this system a little bit. This is the uh, Volta lithium ion battery system. And I've really got to give Winnebago credit for using the Volta. They didn't try to reinvent the wheel or come up with some proprietary design. Uh, you know, some of the other manufacturers have been experimenting with uh, lithium ion batteries and, and they haven't been such a great system. But the Volta one is tried and true. Uh, so they just went with somebody that already had that technology perfected. Now there's a lot of different type of lithium ions. Uh, your cell phone probably has a lithium ion battery. Uh, the little scooter toys that kids ride around on, those are the ones that seem to catch on fire and you know give them a, a bad name. But this is what they consider Auto automotive grade uh, lithium ion technology. It's uh, probably more similar to something that Tesla would use. So you've got a first rate system here. Uh, you can see I've already got it on. Uh, right now I'm pulling uh, 139 watts. I've got my fan on. You've got a four battery pack system and I've still got 55 uh, volts here. I'm providing 12 volt power right now to my uh, to my fans and other things. But also with my inverter on, I'm providing 110 volt power for like my microwave. And you can see the red lights on down there. So the ideal thing about the Volta system is you can run all your 110 volt appliances off your batteries. And that includes your air conditioner. Now this will uh, provide something like 12,000 amp hours of power. And what does that mean? Uh, let me give you a, a few comparisons. Your typical 12 volt lead acid battery, that's gonna provide maybe 80 to 110 amp hours of power. A common setup in the RV business is to use the six volt golf cart style batteries. And you always have to have two of them hooked up in series to provide 12, vol uh, 12 volts. That's gonna provide maybe 180 to 220 amp hours of battery power, 12 volt power. Uh, with your inverter, you can always invert that, that 12 volt up to 110 and maybe charge your computer or, or run a coffee maker or something like that. But to run a microwave, to run an air conditioner takes a lot more power. For instance, let's uh, compare it to the Numar Dutch Star. Now that's got eight batteries. So there's four sets of two six volt batteries hooked up in series, and uh, you put that all together, you have 900, maybe 1,000 amp hours of power and a 2,800 watt inverter. You can run your refrigerator off it, you can watch your TV, you still can't run your air conditioner off it. This has, like I said, nearly 12,000 amp hours of power. It's got a 3,600 watt inverter. So that's enough power to run our air conditioner, our roof air conditioner. In fact, two of our salesmen went to the GoPro games last June or July, I believe, and it was hot in Vail. They turned on the air conditioner, ran it for six straight hours, and probably dropped this down only to about 60%. So the amount of battery power you have that you can use in conjunction with your inverter to provide everything you need in here is just incredible. With those two 115 watt panels on the roof, the, the solar charging helps. And also, uh, all of these units have a second alternator or underhood generator, they call it. It's a 58 volt generator that's dedicated just to charging these batteries. So anytime you're driving, you're charging them up. And with a lithium ion technology, 
I can probably run this down to 20 or 30 percent and still provide reliable 12 volt power to my systems. With your lead asset or your AGM batteries, you really can't run that below 50 percent. You're going to notice that your, your uh, voltage is dropping to 11A, 11.6. Sooner or later, things aren't working right. And with your lead acid, you have to uh, charge that completely. The RV battery or marine batteries are designed to be run down and then recharged fully over and over again. But you're still probably replacing them every two years. And keep in mind that maybe only 70% of the power that you're putting into that from a charger or uh, from your uh, converter, only 70% of that power is going into that battery for storage and use. With lithium ion, 100% of the power you put into it is saved, it's stored, and it's available for discharge, for use. So it's just a much better technology. It runs all your 12 volt systems. Uh, now if I'm going skiing, and again, I probably left my bed out, my skis are underneath, and came in here and made a meal. I'm gonna turn on my furnace and uh, the bolt uses the Truma. Uh, what this is, is a uh, propane fired burner, kind of a heat exchanger unit that provides your heat, you know, uh, temperature settings for, you know, where you want to do it. So I have eco or economy, I have the hot, I have the boost. I can run this with, uh, you know, certain elements to heat my water up faster. Uh, you have your, uh, your gas, and there's different mixtures for your gas. And then uh, my fans, I might want to turn on. And then you also have a series of diagnostics down here or settings that you can go through. But the Truma system is really a good uh, kind of the, I won't call it a, a, you know, infinite hot water, but it's a heat exchanger system that provides hot water very fast and two people can shower provided you don't run out of water without having to worry about it. Uh, we have a power control manual here. Uh, tells us, you know, what we're drawing. We're 15 amp service now. This is our monitors. Uh, gives you our tank levels, uh, battery level. Check that out. Our house batteries are still 14.3. I actually ran the AC for about an hour this morning. I've got fans on. I've been in here running systems. We still have 14.4 volts. And what's it showing? 90% battery capacity right now. So the Volta system is just tough to beat. So uh, let's move on to the lifestyle uh, uh, portion a little bit. When I get back from, you know, a hike, I've probably gone five or six miles and, you know, taken hundreds of pictures maybe. Uh, we can roll that up if you want. But when I get here, one of the first things I'm going to want to do is get my AC or a fan running. And then I'm going to want to sit down and take a look at what what I got you know with modern photography you do a thing called bracketing where you take several uh, pictures of one shot with different settings different aperture different shutter settings so it'll have a range of dark to light and you might look through three or four of them to pick out the one that's best to save and to edit but I'm going to do all of that right here uh, we also have a nice table when this seat spins around uh, for eating dinner at my fingertips virtually are 110 outlets, again, run off that Volta system. I've got USB ports here. Same thing on this side. My 110's kind of underneath over on this side. There you go. And then up here, I've got USB uh, ports. I've got a 12 volt outlet. Up in here, I have more 110 USB and 12 volt. So every place you look, there is a power outlet and a USB port. They also provide these RAM track systems and you have different, you know, little holders or containers. There's some unique, uh, unique ones back in the back. But another thing about this table is it gets out of your way. It's very versatile and convenient. Now I'm going to put this down and kind of swivel this chair back around. Now it is electric and I gotta remember yeah, which way. Hold on here. Oh, there we go. I may need to turn my battery on to get this turned around. But the point I'm trying to show you is 
this tucks up out of the way when it's time there you go when it's time to travel and uh, turn around and have dinner you do have these what they call positive lock system on your cabinetry and a very nice high gloss cabinetry a lot of class B's uh, people talk about the lack of storage in them let's trade spots again and and let me go back and show you what we've got for storage here first of all there's three three on this side nice compartments again back here you notice you've got the uh, cable or satellite input you've got your 12 volt uh, outlets there this compartment here it's amazing how big it is it actually goes all the way across the full width of the back end uh, that's some floor mats for the front back in this is your uh, window covers for the front at night so that's that's your biggest storage compartment back there you have another one right here and again hidden hinges very nice hardware positive locking doors and even a couple of trays here that kind of pop up out of the way but at night you might be sitting here and want to you know set your cell phone up there or a book or something Earplugs. like that earplugs there you go so you've got one of these on on each side uh, some of these lights back here are, are more like reading lights so you do have a manual switch uh, rather than you know the ceiling lights you turn on up front you have these throughout you do have a uh, 21 inch TV on a pull-out bracket that pivots so while you're watching dinner you can sit and, and watch TV if you want pop in a movie when you're in bed you can turn it this way and you know have your entertainment here with you and again it locks in for when you travel so it's not banging around you got another one of these uh, little baskets for the RAM system so you can move this around you know maybe you're keeping spices or things for the kitchen up here speaking about the kitchen we have a uh, Corian countertop by the way really nice with a sink cover stainless steel sink bamboo cutting board with it there is a this is a 110 volt compressor refrigerator and freezer it's actually 3.2 cubic feet anytime you're plugged in anytime that uh, Volta systems on and your inverters on you're providing power with for this so it's virtually cold all the time and you even get a microwave here now this particular model the 170 BL this is a, a regular conventional microwave on the one on the 70 KL model that's actually an induction or, or a convection microwave and then you do have your induction cook surface and again you don't ever have to worry about using too much power you're not going to run out with this Volta system and 12,000 amp hours of power I'm gonna open up the bathroom now and your class B's and I'm actually gonna stand in here let me get my light on to show you the room that you have now I'm about 5'8 so you know yeah you might have to duck down this is for hanging clothes while you travel but you know I've got enough room to stand in here without you know having to duck down very nice fixture uh, you know you got your on off switch here and you also have a sprayer for your toilet now there's a water pump switch here and actually your drain is a power drain so while you're showering you want to turn that on you can see we got a little antifreeze down there right now but you can hear that drain so a really nice shower with actually you've got a vent here also for your uh, bathroom so if you want to turn this on while you're showering step out of here and and that bamboo uh, foot pad there is nice maybe you want to take that out and set it out back if you're you know coming back from a hike and you want to take your shoes off and relax but not stand on the gravel you can use that out back let's get a shot of the window here also I forgot to bring that up you know you do have a, a privacy curtain which is really nice but all of these windows have both nighttime shades and daytime shades 
So, you know, this time of day, I kind of want to keep the heat out. And uh, talking a little bit more about these windows, these windows are the optional acrylic double pane window. So again, great insulation and, and great for winter. See, you got, well, that's actually your door window out there right now. Mm -hmm. But this is a dual pane window. So you're not gonna use as much uh, heat in the winter. Uh, it's gonna cool faster in the summer. And all of these throughout the rear of the coach are the optional dual pane acrylic windows. Uh, I guess we're getting down to this bed system that <laughs> probably should demonstrate. And you know, it would be easier if this was up. So I may just take a minute and, and put it up. I'm gonna zip up my nighttime screen. And I'm gonna, if you let me pass you, oh yeah, one more cabinet I forgot. I'm gonna go outside and, and roll that up and then demonstrate it. up here. I guess I started that out backwards. So this there we go. And now as I roll it up Takes a little bit of a balancing act out here on this bumper. There we go. Now, what we have here, just gonna move this one over. It's their flex bed system. So to show you that, you've got these wooden slats kind of with a little arch in them and there's some flex to them and they put a very dense uh, you know thick foam mattress here so it's actually quite comfortable like I was saying we do have three seat belts in the back two on this side one over here these are just lap belts you have three seat belts that are three point seat belts up front so that bench behind the driver's seat would be a great place for a kid's seat so uh Another thing, as long as I'm here before I make the bed, get a little pull there. A couple of great places for storage here. And also down in this compartment. No wasted space. Nope. I mean, that is really important in these smaller motorhomes that you have enough room to stow all your gear. Maybe you come in and, you know, you got something that's a little wet. You want to throw it in here. Uh, you actually have one in the back too when you come in. That way it's not dripping on the floor. Uh, over here on this side you have a similar setup that pops up a couple storage benches there and then you do have storage under there. You can see your whole house water filter there. Actually I guess that's just a cold water water filter but a lot of room around that. So now I'm gonna Pull this over. And when I do this, and they don't always come together, I don't like the two little seams in the middle. So I'll put the, the two smaller cushions to the side here. go so there's plenty of room as you can see for two people uh, like I said I'm about 5'8 so you can see how much room I've got and there's another six inches at the end of my feet all of your 
reading lights are accessible, your little storage trays, just a great sleeper system. And, you know, most people, I would say, unless they need to get into those cabinets a lot, might leave it this way. You know, you can still store everything underneath. So this is the, uh, the flex bed system, they call it. Let me see. You know, uh, you know, there's a little storage back here that I didn't show, but you might want to take a look at it. So you've got this area here, and actually it, it's kind of roomy. So, you know, put your power cord or something there, and then that kind of covers up when you're not using it. But again, with the roll of screens, with the uh, little uh, storage bins under your flex bed system, all of the cabinets around, especially the one in the back, there's more storage than you would think for a Class B motorhome. Uh, let me see, what else is there I wanted to talk about? There, you know, one thing about these Mercedes Sprinters, let's, let's move up to the dash. Why don't you get in here and then I'll go around to the driver's seat. twice again we've got the electric door there but one of the nice things about the 2020 uh, dash and driver area first of all it is push button start all of your controls are right here at your fingertip you actually shift right here you can see up into reverse down into drive push the button it'll go right into park uh, I can set my cruise control and everything right here. This kind of operates, you know, your dash. Over here, this is for Bluetoothing in my phone, maybe uh, controlling the radio. And this is the Mercedes Bend, I think they call it the UX uh, touchscreen uh, uh, radio and, and navigation system. It's, it's like uh, your Siri. I can say, uh, hey Mercedes. Navigate me to Arches National Park, Moab, Utah. Well, which one do I want? Oh, that's Canyonlands. We'll go there. So it's as simple as that. That's going to guide me all the way to my location. Hey, Mercedes, change to 1051. Change, change the radio to 105.1. Simple as that. So you've got a great, uh, great modern uh, feature with your navigation, your Hey Mercedes, your radio. There you go. Hey Mercedes, shut yourself off. <laughs> she might not understand that. Also. Uh, Part of the safety enhancements on the new dash, I have what they call active collision avoidance. And by active, that, that means it will literally stop you. If somebody pulls in front of you and hits their brakes and you're not paying attention, this will break for you. So there's a collision avoidance, there's adaptive cruise control. So as you're going down the highway and you're coming up on slower traffic, it's gonna slow you down. It's got lane assist. As you start to veer outside of your lane, it's going to nudge you back out or back into your lane. Blind spot monitoring. It's just an extremely safe vehicle. Uh, your headlights, uh, your wipers, things like that are automatic. So it's a very comfortable cockpit. And this one actually has the upgraded uh, ultra leather seats. And you, uh, you can see it's, it's electric here. For your tilt, you have lumbar control. There are three memory settings. For different drivers uh, just really a pleasure to drive one of these on a long trip it feels like you're in a luxury car uh, 
you know, they added a shelf up here a year or two ago, so you've got good storage right overhead. You got some storage up here above your uh, visors. Geez, I think I'm running out of praises for this vehicle. But uh, like I say, if you're a, a fly fisherman, uh, a skier, you like to take your camera and get off in the woods, this is a great vehicle. It'll get you in there. You can get the four-wheel drive option. Uh, yeah, that'll open the door right there. Yep, there you go. Uh, anybody that has any questions on this or any of our other units, uh, please reach out to us. Once again, I'm Mark Love. You can contact me at 303-684-3429. You can also email me at mlove, L-O-V-E, at transwest.com. And uh, in the meantime, uh, stay healthy. And until we see you again, happy trails, my friends.